Hello everybody! Hi, I'm Jen and some of you will know me from Sunday Storytelling at the Mac. We can't be in the Mac right now, so I thought I would bring you into my garden. Now, last time we spoke you guys were in my garden too and it was very, very cold, wasn't it? And we were getting ready for Christmas and it was wintry. But things have changed a little bit since then, haven't they? I bet you've noticed some changes. The weather's got a little bit warmer. The temperature's a little bit better. The daylight's a little bit longer. I love playing outside. And I've discovered in the last couple of weeks that I can even play outside after my tea time now. It's brilliant, isn't it? I bet some of you have noticed that you're allowed out to play after tea as well. Whereas in the winter time, it was too, too cold and too, too dark. It gets dark very early. So, what I think is, I don't need my nice cosy hat anymore. I don't need these gloves. I certainly don't need my big, long, thick, woolly scarf. Not anymore. I might still need my raincoat but I'm going to be brave and take it off. Fingers crossed it doesn't rain. <sighs> oh, brilliant. I don't need to be wrapped up in my warm, cosy things anymore. Oh, because the weather is warmer. Because there's been a big change. Now, there are little tiny changes all day, every day, and we don't really notice them. But they're four times a year some big changes happen and we call those four changes seasons. Do you know about seasons? I bet you do. Now let's think about the one season that's got Christmas in it. That's the last time we met. Remember it was very very cold and it was getting dark in the evenings and we were very lucky in my street we had snowflakes and do you know what that season was called? That season was called winter. Well done. Then there's a lovely, 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 hot, sunny, beautiful, warm season. And the days are really, really, really long. And it's light when you wake up in the morning. And sometimes I bet it's still light when you go to bed. And you maybe go to the beach and maybe have a, oh, mm, a lovely licky ice cream. That season's called summer. And the season after summer, between summer and winter, the leaves begin to fall off some of the trees. We start thinking about Halloween and we start thinking about pumpkin carving and the, the leaves change colour. That one's called autumn. Well done. But there's one that we haven't spoken about and that's the season we're in now. We've thought about summer, we've thought about winter, we've thought about autumn, but this season is where things wake up from their winter sleep and they begin to grow up through the soil, we begin to get leaves back on the trees, we begin to get flowers back in the garden, we begin to be able to hear bird song. There's lots of noise in my garden today but maybe you can hear bird song, can you? little bit, there's a little bit there, and the birds are coming back from their winter holiday in a hot country. Do you know what it's called that season? It's called spring! Well done! And spring makes me want to spring up! Spring makes me want to spring into action and spring with joy! So let's do some of that now because we've been sitting listening and you've been doing really really well but let's get moving. I'm getting a little bit chilly because it's not quite summer, I'm not quite ready for this clothes just yet. Although some days in spring it can be really, really hot and sunny, just like summer. And other days it can be not quite so warm and a little bit wintry. And that's one of the days it is today. But can you put your fingers like this, closed up tight in a fist, and I'm going to say one, two, three, and I want you to spring them open like that. I'll say one, two, three, Spring! You do it with me. One, two, three, spring! One, two, three, 
spring. One, two, three, spring. Very, very good. I'm beginning to get a little bit warmer. Let's try it with the rest of our bodies. Let's try curling up small like this and springing out wide. Are you ready? One, two, three, spring. One, two, three, spring. One, two, three, spring. Well done. Now, if I crouch right down on the floor, you won't be able to see me in the camera. So I would disappear from shots, but I'd like you to crouch down on the floor and I'm just gonna curl up like this a little bit lower down. Hopefully you can still see me. And this time I want you to spring up as bouncy as you can and try and find a springy bouncy sound that I might use like this. Okay, you ready? So crouch down as small as you can. Small as you can, three, two, one, and boing, spring. And one, two, three, boing, spring. And one more, one, two, three, boing, spring. Oh, brilliant. I am so much warmer now that we've sprung into action. Now, season bulbs don't spring up like we did, but they do begin to grow at this time of year because the weather is warmer and the soil is getting warmer. The earth in which they've been all cosy sleeping has been getting warmer and warmer and this wakes the little tiny seeds up. So what I'd like you to do this time, again I'm not going to curl up right down on the floor because you won't be able to see me, but what I'd like you to do is to curl up in a tight, tight ball, as small as you can on the ground. And I'm gonna curl down just a little bit like this, so hopefully you can still see me. Okay, tuck your head in. And you are being a seed or a bulb that's been asleep in the ground all winter long. And the spring is coming and the days are getting longer and the sunshine's getting warmer. And the soil begins to warm up. And this seed begins to wake up a little bit. And the first thing that happens is that I would like you to push one of your feet out of the tight ball that you've curled up into. Push one of those feet out. And that's your shoot. The seeds shoot going down, down, down into the soil and wiggle your toes. And those are the roots coming out of the shoot. And then we'll do your other foot and we're going to push your feet, your shoot down, sorry, your root down into the soil and wiggle your toes to make the roots push, push, push. And then the next thing that's going to happen is uncurl one arm and we're going to push it up, up, up like this. And this is a shoot because it shoots up to the sky. Roots go down and shoots go up and it's going to push up through the soil with a still keep your hands in a fist like this at the moment this is a bud and maybe we can do another one push 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 slowly slowly standing up good well done and we've still got our fists nice and tightly like this like a bud all closed up now I don't know if you can see these flowers over here but they're all closed up and the green bit you can see is called a bud. And it will open up very soon. You can open your fingers now. Open up when the weather gets even warmer and the plant gives itself even more energy. It will open up into beautiful, beautiful flowers. Those are going to open into beautiful tulips. I wonder what sort of flower you might be pretending that you're going to open up into. You could be a daffodil, maybe. They're the yellow sort of trumpety ones. You could be a beautiful purple crocus or a lovely yellow primrose or maybe even a white snowdrop. They're one of the first flowers you see in springtime. Little white uh, snowdrops, they hang their heads down like this. And they're one of the first signs that spring is on the way and they really make me smile. Well done everybody. So you started as a tiny seed and then you pushed your roots down into the soil and your shoots up 
and we had our buds and we opened our buds to be beautiful flowers blowing maybe in the breeze or having the sunshine on their petals oh and it rains too in the spring doesn't it poor flowers will be getting very very rainy but do you know what the flowers don't mind because they need the rain they need the rain to be able to grow just like when you have flowers in your house you maybe water them with a watering can the flowers outside don't need to be watered with a watering can or a hose unless it's very 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 hot because they get the water from the rain and that helps them to grow and do you know what it's not just flowers that do that it's trees as well this tree beside me is a fruit tree and can you see on the fruit tree there's tiny little green specks can you see it those tiny little green specks are buds just like we had our fists curled up like that and then we opened them to be our petals for a flower these will grow into leaves and these leaves will have lovely blossom little flowers called blossom and when the blossom is finished that will turn into fruit so by the spring sorry by the summer and autumn this tree will be full of fruit but just now it's in bud and just like us pretending to be a seed under the soil this tree can you believe it this tree grew from a tiny tiny seed as well I've got a seed here now this seed is one that you might recognize this is brown and shiny when it's first coming out of the ground this is an old one this is a shiny shiny tree seed does anybody recognize what it might be that's right this is the seed of a horse chestnut tree and they're fun for children to play with this one's called a conker and it if I put it in the ground and I watered it and I looked after it very very carefully it would grow into a great big enormous conker tree or a horse chestnut tree now my fruit tree here didn't grow from a horse chestnut my fruit tree this one is a plum tree so this grew from a plum seed you know when you're biting into a lovely piece of fruit there's a hard stone in the middle maybe if you were very very lucky if you planted that seed a tree like this might grow it would take a long time but it just might if you were very very lucky and trees are very very important trees help the planet to be fit and healthy but trees also did you know trees are houses well they are Trees can be houses for insects. Trees can be houses for squirrels. And trees can be houses for something else. Hmm. I wonder if you can guess. Something with wings. Something with a beak. Something you might be able to hear now. It's going tweet, 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 tweet. And these somethings are coming back from their long winter holiday in a nice hot warm country they're flying back on their wings maybe they've got tail feathers that they might be shaking on their wings and they're looking for somewhere to live have you guessed what it is yet yeah that's right i'm thinking of the birds well done the birds are coming back from their winter migration and they want to build a nest now some birds like swans and ducks build their nests in reeds by the edge of a pond or a lake and some birds build their nest high up in trees and they need to be high up so that they can be safe from things like cats that might want to come and disturb their nests i've got a cat in my garden so i hope that my birds that come visiting my garden will build their nests high up in the trees do you think a bird needs to build a nest what do you think they use do they use lego bricks no do they use building blocks no i'm being silly aren't i what do you think they use 
birds use things that they can find in the garden or in a forest or in the street where you live. They can only use the things they can find outside. Birds use twigs and sticks. Birds use grass. Birds use leaves off the trees. Birds use something soft and green and spongy called moss. Sometimes birds even use mud to make their nests nice and waterproof. I wonder if I'll be able to find any of those things around in my garden and then we could maybe have a go at building our own bird's nest. Maybe you could have a look for some things when you're out for a walk or if you've got a garden, maybe you could find some sticks and leaves and twigs and bits of grass. I'm going to see if I can find some now. See you in a minute. Great. These sticks are brilliant. Nice and lightweight. Well, ah, that's probably enough, I Ooh. think. Hey, that'll be good. A little bit of sheep wool. That really will make mm. you nice and cosy. Yeah, very good. The waterproofing do really yes. nicely. Oh, great. There's loads of it. Perfect. That will make the nest nice and cosy and soft and make sure the eggs are safe too. Wasn't I lucky? Look, I did find all these things for building a nest and I found them in my garden. I've got some sticks, some very light little twigs. Why do you think they birds might not use big, thick sticks, big heavy ones. Why do you think they only would use little thin ones like this? You're right. They wouldn't be able to carry them so well, would they? Because if you think about it, a bird, I just, this isn't a real bird, I'm just borrowing one of my daughter's toy birds, but a bird can only carry things in its claws of its feet or in its beak. It doesn't have hands like we do, and it wouldn't be able to hold a bag or a, uh, a box to put them in, would it? So it can only carry the things that it can carry in the claws of its feet or its beak. So they need to be short, thin like this. But also, if they had big, thick, chunky sticks, maybe the nest would fall out of a tree. And that would be no good at all. This nest has got to balance in the branches of a tree. So I've got my sticks. Let's see if I can put them into a bit of a nest shape. There we go. Nests are sort of circle shapes. There we go. Can you see that? I'm not sure, but there we are. And then we need maybe something to keep the nest from the weather. So a few leaves woven in amongst the sticks will stop the rain getting in so badly. So we've got some leaves and they'll stop the rain getting in so badly and keep the nest a little bit dry. So put those around the edge there. Now, I don't know about you, but when I am in my home, which is what this is, a nest is a bird's home, isn't it? When I'm in my home, I like to be nice and warm and dry and cosy. So the next thing a bird would be looking for would be something to keep his, his or her nest nice and cosy. That's right. Nice and cosy birds. Thank you. So this, this fluffy, soft green stuff is called moss. And this is really good for the edges of a nest and for the inside of a nest to keep it warm and cosy. Oh, and we'll put that round there. And sometimes some grass might be good too. Grass is another material that birds use. And they weave it all in very carefully. I'm not a bird, so I'm not an expert nest builder, but I'll do my best to show you. And we'll weave it all in nice and carefully. And there we go. And if a bird is very, very lucky, they might find some sheep wool or some animal fur. This isn't real sheep's wool, but if you were near somewhere that had a field of sheep, 
or maybe you've got a dog in your house who's beginning to shed its fur a little bit uh, or a cat those little bits of fur are super brilliant for keeping a bird's nest nice and cozy and the birds have to fly in with all these things in their beak and build up their nest slowly 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 so let's try doing that now are you ready you flap your wings you can stand up and do this if you like you flap your wings maybe shake your tail feather and pretend you're picking up something with your beak and you can flap 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 flap, flap and put it down and arrange it when you've only got your beak and your feet claws to arrange things with remember and when the nest is finally built and the bird is nice and comfy and cozy then and only then can they go inside the nest there we are there you are birds inside the nest and lay their eggs now a bird this size wouldn't really lay an egg this size but this is what I've got to show you today a bird this size would lay a tiny egg, probably maybe about this big but let's use a bird this size who just might lay an egg this size excuse me mr. and mrs. songbird we're just going to borrow your nest for a moment oh there we are so you pop in there just for a little moment I know we're borrowing your nest I'm so sorry we'll give it you back in a moment there we go. Now, this bird is more like a duck. This is more like a duck. So I need you to imagine now that this nest isn't up in a tree, but it's on the shores of a lake. So the bird, the duck in this case, sits on its nest and lays an egg. And the egg has to be kept warm and cosy. So the duck has to sit there for a very, very, very long time. Little birds like this lay their eggs and they have to sit for about two weeks. And I expect ducks have to sit for a bit longer. I'm not entirely sure. But what happens is they lay their eggs and then slowly the chick grows inside the egg. And after a while, underneath the duck, but I'm going to lift the duck up so that you can see underneath the duck the egg begins to crack because the chick inside needs to get out so the egg begins to crack and open up and eventually out pops a tiny little chick a tiny little duckling or a chick from a chicken and it can be with its mummy and it will grow up just like your mummy looks after you and your daddy looks after you or whoever your grown up is the chicks and the ducks and the geese look after their babies in spring and the babies get stronger and stronger and they begin to learn to fly or they begin to learn to swim if they're ducks or geese or swans now i'm thinking this poor chicken and these poor songbirds have had to sit on this nest for at least two weeks and we've made it as warm and cosy as we can but what do you think they do for two whole weeks well they don't need to worry too much about food because birds are very very clever and the mummy bird sits on the nest in most cases not all cases but in most cases the mummy bird that does the sitting on the nest and the daddy bird flies off and brings food to the mummy bird and so the mummy bird doesn't get hungry but there's an awful lot of sitting around what would you do if you were a bird sitting on a nest hmm. we think they would be warm and cozy enough but i don't think birds would watch television don't think so don't think birds would what would you do if you've got lots of sitting around to do read a book that's a good suggestion uh, you might play with some toys yeah you might even do some drawing and some making that's right 
are these birds going to do? I think they sit and they listen and they watch and see what other birds are up to. I think birds must have some brilliant stories, don't you? From what they can see high up on their nests, high up in the trees, when they're waiting for their eggs to hatch. So, we've seen my version of how a bird might build its nest and what it needs to use to make its nice cosy home. But what about you and me? Let's us go inside and make our nests. I wonder what we might use. Come on, let's go inside and see. It's much warmer back in here. That's the thing about spring. It's lovely to be outside playing, but sometimes you need to come back in to warm up, huh? Well, so we made a nest outside with the things that birds might find outside. But do you know what? Sometimes, like I said, it's, war it's nice to warm up in the house and we could make a nest inside with the things in our houses. A nice, warm, cosy, story nest, perhaps. I wonder what we could use. What will you find in your house to use? I found a few bits and pieces already. I found a nice, cosy rug. There we are. Let's put that round. There we go. And this one came off my bed. I like to wrap up warm in that. There we go. And some cushions to make it all soft. Good, let's put those round. You can find all sorts of things in your house. Probably best to ask a grown-up if they don't mind you using them. But I bet you can find lots and lots of different things. But I like to be warm and cosy and comfortable. Ah, oh, yes, that's perfect. Oh yes, I think I could quite happily hatch my eggs in this nest. I'd have to sit for a long time. Do you remember I said it was probably about two weeks? What would you bring into your nest? I bought a few toys. I would definitely bring some books with me, I think, because I love stories, as you know. Even maybe some craft activities. Maybe you'd bring your favourite snuggly toy. Maybe you bring, I don't know, maybe you bring dressing gown and slippers to make yourself even more warm and cosy. I'm going to let you build your nest in your own time later on. But how about you snuggle down and we'll tell a story in this nest now. Yeah? Oh, great. If you've got time to listen, I've got a good story to tell. Once, a long time ago, spring was just a thing that had just been invented. And the birds were just learning to build nests and that everything was just learning what to do in springtime. The seeds were all curled up under the soil and they were learning to push their roots down into the soil and push their shoots up above the soil to grow into beautiful plants and flowers and trees. And the birds were just beginning to build their nests. Just like this one here. <laughs> going to borrow Mrs Chip. And Mrs Chip was looking around for the best things to build her nest with. And she decided she was quite a vain bird, this nest, this um, duck. Do you know what the word vain means? It means she likes to do things the best. It means she likes to look her best. It means she likes everybody to think the best of her. And so she thought, I would like to have the best nest. Hmm, I wonder what I should use for the best nest for my chick before it needs to hatch. So she hunted around high and low. And remember the world was very, very new. And people were just and people were just learning what to do in spring, and the animals and chicks and birds were learning what they needed to do too. So everybody was just learning what might be a good nest. Well, Mrs Chick waddled off and she began to look at 
the things that the other birds were building their nests in. And the other birds were using things that they could find around the place. They were using things like mud and twigs and moss and sticks and leaves and all the things that we found outside earlier on. Oh, Mrs Duck looked at those and she thought, oh, oh, those are dirty. Those have been on the ground. I don't want to use those. I want my nest to be the best nest. I want my nest to be shiny. I want my nest to be sparkly. I want my nest to catch the eye of everybody that passes by. Well, so Mrs. Bird trundled off and she started to try and look for things. Well, I don't know about you, but the last time I was walking down my street, I didn't find anything that was shiny. I didn't find very much on my street that would make Mrs. De Mrs. Duck's nest look sparkly and shiny, just like she wanted it to be. Poor Mrs. Duck couldn't find anything either. She looked and looked and all she could find was the natural materials that we talked about a moment ago. The leaves, the twigs, the mud, the grass. This is no good. This is no good, said Mrs. Duck. This is no good at all. Nobody will think that my nest is the best if I don't find nice shiny things and sparkly things. Poor Mrs. Duck, she didn't know what to do. She knew she needed to build a nest soon. She knew that her eggs would be needing to be hatched soon. But she wouldn't settle for the normal things that people make their nests out of that ducks make their nests out of and that chickens and hens and all the other birds make their nests out of. She just wouldn't settle for it. And all the other ducks and chickens and birds tried to tell her, Mrs. Chicken, come on, Mrs. Duck, come on. You just need to build a nest. But all the things that you're using are boring and dirty and, 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 and from outside. But you're an outside bird, that's the point. <sighs> but I want people to think I'm amazing. I want people to think I'm brilliant. I want the best nest. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, while Mrs. Duck was busy trying to find the best things, everybody else was just quietly getting on and building their nests from the mud and the leaves and the twigs and the sticks and the moss and they were settling down and making themselves cosy and laying their eggs and beginning to warm their eggs so that they would hatch and that their chicks would be safe and Mrs Duck was getting more and more worried and more and more anxious and more and more picky about what she wanted to make her nest out of and the days were getting longer, and the days were getting warmer, and the days where Mrs Duck should have been sitting on her eggs were catching up with her. What was she going to do? Oh, oh dear, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? said Mrs Duck. What am I going to do? In the end, she went round to her neighbours and she said, This is chicken. What am I going to do? You've got such a lovely cosy nest and I haven't got a nest at all. Please may I come and borrow your nest? I'm very sorry, said Mrs Chicken. I'm really very, very sorry, but there's only room for me and my eggs in this nest. Oh dear, oh dear, said Mrs Duck. And she went to another duck friend of hers and she said, Hello, duck dearest. Hello, my duck. Uh, please, please, may I borrow your nest? I haven't built a nest of my own. I was so worried about it being the best nest and being the most perfect nest that I haven't got a nest at all and I'm worried that there will be nowhere for my chicks to hatch. I'm ever so sorry, said the duck. I'm really very sorry. You know you are my best ducky friend, but there just is no room in my nest for you. You really do need to build your own nest. Oh, but I'm very worried now because I haven't got time. I was so busy about trying to make it the best nest 
and the finest nest, and, and that you would all think I was the best, and now everybody will think I'm very silly, because I haven't got a nest at all, and that's really silly. And poor old Mrs Duck got herself in very upset. She was trying, trying so hard to be the best, and to be the most uh, glamorous, and the most clever, and the most shiny nest builder, that she'd been so picky, she hadn't got a nest at all. And as much as her friends would like to share their nests with them, then they wouldn't have a nest for their chicks to be born into. Oh, what were they going to do? Then, everybody had a brilliant idea. All the birds flocked around each other and they had a little bit of a chat and they thought to themselves, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? This poor friend of ours, she's no nest at all. And yes, she was silly. And yes, she should have done the hard work herself and stopped being so snooty. But really, what are we going to do? We can't let her have her eggs laid in no nest at all. Well, said Mrs. Bluebird, what if we all took a little bit out of our nest? We can all spare a little bit of padding. What if we all took a little bit and we gave it to her? Do you think she'd accept it, said Mr. Robin? She's been ever so snooty. I think she's not got much choice. She's pretty desperate, said Mr. Blue Tit. All right, said Mrs. Bluebird. That's what we'll do then. And each of the very, very kind birds gave a little bit of their nest to Mrs. Chick. A cushion, a little tiny bit more, and a little tiny bit more, and there, eventually, all the birds had given a little bit from their nest, and they called Mrs. Chick over. Look, We've built you a nest. We were so worried that we didn't want you to not have a place to lay your eggs. Everybody's given a little bit from their nests. Now you will have a space to lay your own egg. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, said the duck. Oh, I've been so silly, Mrs Chick said. I've been so, so silly. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. This really is the best nest because everybody worked together and you were my best friends. Thank you very, very much. And she snuggled down and she laid her egg. And just like all the other birds, she sat on her nest until the egg was ready to hatch. And out cheeped a tiny little chick. And the advice that she gave to that chick, don't try too hard to be the best at everything. Just enjoy what you have. And the best thing you can be is somebody's best friend. Because without my best friends, I wouldn't have had the best nest to hatch you in. Mrs Chick did a bit of learning there, I think. Sometimes the best thing you can do is to try your best to be a best friend. Have fun nest building, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye.